Hello everyone, welcome to Demystifying Strapi Populate and Filtering. This video is going to be a quick refresher on how you can get used to field selection, population and filtering. Why is this talk necessary? Over the years, Strapi has changed quite a lot and for the better. With that said, the most noticeable change that we've had has been with how we interact with our content. Just like creation and changing, um, consuming content is a core part of the data interaction experience. This talk is going to get you comfortable with the tools that you need to consume your data effectively and efficiently. Our conversation will most primarily be based on the entity service, ideally because, like I mentioned, the entity and um, the REST API and the GraphQL API responses are based off of the entity service. So we're going to get started immediately with population and field selection. Like I've shown in the video, uh, in the picture below, if your name isn't on the list, you can't get in. That's essentially how Strapi treats population and field selection. By default, Strapi is not going to populate your relations or select your relations for you. You will need to do this manually. This saves bandwidth to the database from the resulting database queries that Strapi generates. You will need to enable permissions as you interact with your data, for example, through the REST API, i.e. if you have a person who has, for example, a hobby or a relation to a hobby, you cannot populate this relation if you haven't enabled, for example, the find permission on this um, collection type. For now, you can't select or just return an array of IDs when you try to perform field selection. This is something that we are having a conversation about, but there is no um, defined way for it at the moment. Please keep a close eye on the depth of your population and field selection. The more complex the request, the longer it takes to execute and complete. So we're going to head over to the next section and show a few examples of how we're going to do this. I'll be staring upwards because this is where I have my demo. So as you see on my screen here, on the example section, we have a few things. Currently, I have my REPL open. What a REPL is, is basically an environment that you can use to execute scripts in whichever um, language. In this particular case, I'm using Replit, and the language I'm using is just JavaScript and Node.js runtime. And this is what we're going to be using to build our queries, i.e. the query object, and then we're going to be able to obtain the eventual query string. Something else that I have is my Strapi application that I created right before this video. There are a few collection types which I'm going to explain along the way. Ideally, we have some top-level relations, some top-level fields, some dynamic zones as well. We also have some components within those dynamic zones. Ideally, this is going to give us a nice and complex experience for us to be able to get used to what we're going to be working on. On the right side, I have my Insomnia open. Insomnia is just a tool to be able to query APIs. You can use any tool that you prefer. Ideally, once we build our queries in the repo, we're going to use those query strings and send them over to Insomnia. Some of them have already been populated. As you can see, I first have a first level request. Like I mentioned in the beginning, Strapi will not select any relations or populate relations for you by default. If you look at these two um, records that have been retained, when you query the API people endpoint, you have Android drink water and Megan drink coffee. If we go over to our Strapi application here and we take a look at the content manager and we see the people who are involved, you can see that, for example, Andrew Drinkwater has got a whole lot of information. You have some top level fields here, you have a Boolean field, you have a media field, and you have a dynamic zone called MISC info. Within that, you have two component types, right? We have a contact detail and we also have fun facts. The other relation that we have is company. So as you can see, there's a lot of information that still isn't available here. Say we want to bring back as much information as possible, right? What you're going to do is you're going to choose the wildcard operator, right? The wildcard operator allows you to populate everything. The depth of this is still limited because as you will notice, we may have our MISC info here but for example, we do not have any ability to see our secret facts within our fun facts component. You will need to perform deep population to be able to access these. As you can see, we have as much information as Strapi allows us to see. Perfect. Say we would like to populate a relation. 
Let's head over to a query builder and see how that looks. The query in question to populate specific relations in this particular case is as seen above. We're going to comment out the query or any query objects that have already been defined. There aren't any and leave this one. We're going to run our repo and we're going to obtain this script. Like I mentioned, these query strings are not particularly going to be human readable because it doesn't matter. You don't have to use JavaScript. You can use literally any other tool that allows you to build query strings. Once you have this and you say you would like to populate the relation, for example, you take this query string that has been generated and combine it with your top level um, URL for the API. In this particular case, it's forward slash API people. And then we have our question mark to start adding query parameters. As you can see, we have been able to populate the picture, which is a media field. And that also, in essence, is a relation. Say we'd like to populate and field select, for example. We're going to comment out this query object. We're going to look at this example of population and field selection. In this particular case, I've specified that I'd like to populate the profile picture and not just populating the profile picture, but I'd also like to select the name field from the profile picture. What that means is do not return all the attributes of the profile picture as you see in the screen on the right, only return the name. If we take a look at what that looks like and actually run the repo, if we copy that string, make changes to our endpoint there, you will notice that we have been able to populate the profile picture here and also return the name attribute, which in this particular case is favicon.png for both. Okay. Let's take a look at another example of populating and field selection. This one is a bit more different in its syntax. So in the example that I'm showing you right now, which we're going to run to see what happens, what I'm doing is I'm not only populating the company relation for these particular people objects, right? Or person objects. I also would like to populate the company's MISC info, um, MISC info dynamic zone data. Let's see how that looks. When we execute the query and obtain our query string, we're going to go back and do the same thing, edit our query. Once we execute, you will notice that we've been able to populate not only just our company, but the company's MISC info as well, the dynamic zone. Let's step it up a notch just a tiny bit and try to have a more complex sort of population and field selection query. We're going to uncomment this next one. As you can see here, I'm asking to do quite a lot. What I'm asking to do is I would like to populate the company's, uh, the person's company, that company's MISC info. And not only that, I wouldn't want to populate everything here because I would just like to look at the secret info of the company. As you can see, the contact detail is primarily just a text field, which is fine, but we have some secret info. If I'd like to only populate the secret info, I would tell Strapi using populate fragments to say on MISC info, please populate everything that is within secret info. Let's run that, obtain the query string, go ahead and make the change again, or actually it's here, which is already done for us. Once this has been executed, you'll be able to see we have populated the company. Within the company, we have been able to also populate the miscellaneous info. Within the miscellaneous info, we have populated specifically the company secrets secret info component. As you can see, it contains information about work benefits. We're going to be moving now to filtering. Here's a bit more information about population. What can you populate? As you've seen, you're able to populate relations, components, and dynamic zones. You're also able to populate and select nested relations. Filtering is a great place for you to be able to pull specific information about the data that you have within your application. It allows you to perform fine-grained queries. There's a few things that you have to think about, though, as you're trying to filter. Primarily, deep, fil deep filtering is not available in dynamic zones. You can't actually filter by data in um, dynamic zones, only components. Deep filters may cause performance issues as well. Please keep that in mind. So the more complex your query, the longer it's going to take to actually execute. A great place to start for you is to read a bit more in our documentation. 
We provide a lot of information about the abilities that you have with filtering, as long as some valid operators as you try to filter your data. Let's take a look at a few examples. Back here in our repo, we have created a few more to be able to filter. So the first one is just going to be a filter by top level attribute. In this particular case, it's just a Boolean. So we're going to go here, look at top level filtering. The first thing, as you can see, is we're going to pull all the information. As usual, it works like we expect. If we ran the REPL again and we pull our query string, add that here, you will notice that we've been able to pull information about anybody who is not happy, right? In this particular case, I said, please apply a filter to the um, people where the field happy is false. There is also another way that you can describe this using some of the operators that are valid with Strapi. If you see in this other example, I said, filter on the field happy, make sure that happy is not true using the dollar sign not operator. When you run this and you obtain the query string, you're going to end up with the exact same response. For our next example, we're going to look at filtering by relation, which is here. Let's go ahead and uncomment our filter by relation query object. You will see here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pull a list of all the people who work for big tech companies or who are part of big tech companies. In this case, we're going to say filters company big tech, which means that the person's company field must have a field called big tech, which is set to true. If you run this, you'll be able to obtain this response. Because if you take a closer look, i.e., for example, say and populate equals company, you'll be able to see that the company, Huge Inc., has big, big text set to true and Megacorp is also set to true, which is perfect. Let's go ahead and take a look at a complex filter. We'll uncomment our other query. So in this complex filter, I'm doing a few things. Firstly, I'm going to pull a list of people who are both happy and work for big tech companies. As you can see, I'm using the AND operator. The AND operator allows you to combine or perform filters on a list of fields. In this particular case, I'm only filtering on two fields. Also, I'm able to use the AND operator with a nested filter as well. As you can see, I'm going all the way down to companies and the big tech attribute. Also, I would prefer to have a list of these people whose profile pictures are not null. I can describe this as not and then the attribute null, or I can also describe it as not null and set it as true. It will still work the same way. If you look at our complex filtering query, you're going to have Andrew Drinkwater returned. Why? Because as it states, happy is equals to true. Andrew Drinkwater, as you saw in our previous query, works for a big tech company. And also the profile picture is set to an actual value that is usable. We can actually check this by saying populate equals profile picture. As you can see, the profile picture attribute is set and it is not null, which is great. So here's a few things to keep you going as you continue interacting with your data, in particular consuming it. Please read our documentation. For the REST APIs, go ahead and build your queries as objects and use whatever library that you'd like to use. And finally, please come have a chat with us. Join our community on Discord where myself, my other team of solutions engineers and the whole Strapi team as well will be there. Thanks for watching.